So today on Vulnerable, I get to speak with actress Lindsay Shaw. She's a good friend, and she um, was very brave in opening up to me about her sobriety journey. So I'm going to give you a trigger warning on today's episode in that she and I both share some details about our journey with uh, alcohol and with her some drugs. And um, I, I hope you will come along in listening with an open heart and open mind and celebrate with us as um, we look at where we've come from and where we are now. Guys, I am here with my good friend, Lindsay Shaw, and I haven't seen you in a while. I know. And this is really fucking cool. I am so happy. No, I'm too. Because this was originally going to be on Zoom, and then you were like, hey, I'm going to be there. And are you like, kidding me? I was like, this is so cool that I, I actually know. get to be... It, this is really healing for me, because I've always wanted to stay in studio, and... You know, having the littles and being in Texas has made it more difficult to be, you know, in studio. Yeah. And I'm so blessed to have this opportunity because I feel like these kinds of conversations are really better to have, you know, in person. Yeah. To catch up with somebody. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is definitely adding a nice mix to like, vulnerable, like the yeah. energy. Yeah. Yeah. I can see the neon light shining right? in your Check eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing, like. I have um, recently started therapy again. Ooh. <laughs> and it's really freaking cool. Yeah. I'm doing it through telehealth. Cool. So it's not in person. Great. Right? I actually do that. Um, I actually see my psychiatrist not in person either. Yeah. yeah. And like you can do it. I feel like if you've been in person therapy before. Yes. I feel like if you're the kind of person that's starting therapy for the first time and you're like, eh, it's, you're probably going to be like, I don't see it. I don't yeah. see what's so helpful. What's up? The and odds it, are against you. Exactly. And then, like, there's something about just right here where, um, like, it is a difference of, I mean, even that screen, even if you're right like this on a screen with each other, there's just something about, like, hey, I yeah. see your eyes real time. And, yeah. like, you know. You I'm can, you can, you, if you're willing. Over, yeah. That, yeah. Um, so I have started EMDR therapy. Awesome. How is that going? I've heard about it, but you never have. done. So EMDR uh, is a is a is a philosophy of being able to cope with trauma, traumatic experiences in your childhood, and it uh, uses a lot of different techniques to be able to process those things. I had been told about it. Um, I had never taken it seriously, mm -hmm. but when I wanted to start to write a memoir, <gasps> <Ooh>. <laughs> I started needing a timeline of events. And something about, like, trying to put pen to paper to all the things you experience as a young actor and everything, so much of it has been blocked out. <laughs> I don't know if you can really – I really want to get into that. <laughs> I, I really I really can. Okay. Um, the program that I run for sobriety, that's, like, one of the first things they have you do is, like, write timeline. out that timeline. How important it is. Oh, it, to like reclaim your fucking brain. Right. <laughs> and 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 yeah, put boundaries around that time when like you can like no one triggers happen, no one things happened. Otherwise it's like this crazy chaos. Like you can't really connect the dots with no all dots. the brain fog. No dots, no lines. Mm -mm. Just N chaos. Exactly. Yeah. And then you see it, you see it, and you're like, all right, I can I can step into this trauma and see like where the patterns were and how that happened and yeah. where it might have started and how that overlapped. I am very new into this timeline stuff. Yeah. So and so the last time I saw you, I think we were we were playing around in the kitchen. Like yeah. we were having fun. I think we were doing some fun YouTube stuff and it was so nice to like be like, "Oh shit, like oh shit, Lindsay knows me. She likes me. We get along." Oh my gosh, I love you. I, love I told you, you how much I freaked out. Like you're you like too. my idol. You'll always be like one of the biggest impressions I've told I've said Which this. Which is so but. silly because we were on shows very similar but at similar times. At similar times, but, I was a little but older. like I saw like just just like I said like your whole like a female having a right to be funny and like through anger almost through that through that like strong sort of like mm. da 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 like yeah. that was kind of like I I really attached to it. Plus that show was just magic, and so oh, yeah, you know it was. Yeah. yeah, I haven't watched it in a long time, and part of me does want to do like a rewatch thing to it. Mm. So who knows. Um, but, um, but yeah, you know, I would def rewatch it. Even Stevens anywhere. Like to, it's, yeah, it's yeah, on yeah. Disney plus. It is. It of is. Course. What about Ned? Okay. Ned. It's, um, Nep no. Disney plus. What? What is Ned's on? Nickelodeon, right? Yeah. Okay. Nickelodeon, but like Does it's Nickelodeon streaming have again. a streaming thing? No. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it's Netflix. Okay. 
Wow, that's horrible. That's okay. That's it is Netflix. It's Netflix. No, but you were right. Okay, I was right. You you were fucking right. I was fucking right. Dude. <laughs> Ned is on Netflix. Exactly. You get Go mixed watch up it. with all of those. You're over here, over Hulu and dude. YouTube, and what am I doing now? I feel very um, protective over my kids in a way that they have too much content that they could use. Like just, you know, it's like gone are the days where. You can like go to Tower Records and enjoy an entire CD of music or just have less, less options mm -hmm. for fucking anything, for the yeah. arts, for music. When, when waiting, just even waiting a week for the next episode. Right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. having a routine and a schedule where like, you know, you build in that time for entertainment as opposed to you just being so inundated with it all the time and having it so available. It like, makes you wonder like the way that people feel about our characters you know, all your characters you've been portrayed as as well with Pretty Little Liars and like everything. Like, are people able to connect with this new wave of young talent that's happening like they did with us? It is very fast moving. It, it is. is very, very fast moving. And there's also this thing that isn't reflected back, I feel like, in young talent, which is like your age, like age appropriate. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like that... You, People don't understand how much you shortcut, how much magic you shortcut by like trying to either cast older to play younger or 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 you know, try to be older and all of these TikToks and everything. I'm mm. like best friends with like not best friends with I I, I teach these kids now in acting <gasps> class and you oh, can't yeah. help but to like spill over onto them. But yeah. like, my gosh, you know, it's it's the the innocence has gone so much earlier. Yeah, man. It is really shitty. Like yeah. they do a lot of these like funny TikTok hahas, but it, there's a sadness behind it where they're like, this was me at like 15. Mm -hmm. And now look at the girls now that are 15. And it's like, it's not meant to throw shade on these young girls, but I think it's meant to highlight the fact that that innocence is is kind of lost a lot earlier. Well, yeah. I mean, I, like these girls are a young, are a reflection of like the things that we're valuing as a society. Yeah. I mean, we're just kind of like, ooh, we're hitting a real polarity on on what we can tolerate you yeah. know what i mean yeah um and so like these young people are are a product of that and yeah it, it hurts my heart now that i like grow i yeah. mean i can't imagine what it's like to have actual babies right no exactly and, and like, i have two girls and i haven't oh. yet dealt with the ramifications of the social media aspect yeah. of it like i have a five and a three-year-old and the concept of being social is still extremely organic and real. Right. Um, I will say though that like their connection to like a YouTube video is sometimes a little scary to watch. That like that addiction, that mm -hmm. hook that mm -hmm. it can get in on them mm -hmm. that early in life. Yeah. And that's simply. And for me being sober. Um, I get really nervous about anything that has like a hook into my children. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so let's get back into what we were talking about with, you know, the, the therapy, therapeutics yeah. of EMDR. Cool. Since I last saw you, what journey have you been on? Woo, girl. Do you want to talk about yeah, it? Yeah, okay, cool. I do. I just want to I make do. sure that you're feeling like you're in a safe space and a comfortable place. I am. You are. I feel very safe. I feel very comfortable here. Good. So I'm going to be honest. So I just celebrated one year sober. Hell yeah! Yay! Cheers! The cheers, baby! Shots! Cheers! Shots! Shots, shots, shots of water! Shots, water. Shots, shots! Shots of latte! And water! And Celsius! Um, yeah. Yes, I freaking love caffeine Oh my drinks. gosh! <laughs> like, I'm not so much on the coffee train, but my goodness! Yes, like, that caffeine water can good hit. Good lord! It caffeine hits. water. Caffeine water hard. Yep. Um... Anywho, so that happened. Yes, Obviously, does. before that happened, you know, the last relapse was pretty <laughs> much just the worst. Oh, was it? Oh, man. Okay. Oh, my gosh. It's it's the only thing that pushed me, like, I I just had to be done after this. Like, I finally had some love in my life from people that, like, Aww. it just wasn't worth it anymore, you know? Yeah. But the biggest part of my sobriety is that I went and I got diagnosed finally. I have had an underlying sort of something going on for a while that I haven't wanted to look at. Okay. I, uh, for a long time, I was like, it's part of me being an actor, this drama, this out-of-control emotion. Yes, this, like, girl. Ba 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 ba. Like mm -hmm. you know, it masked it. I was like, I'm great at my craft. You're I just like, can't I'm shut such it a off. tragic, beautiful <laughs> princess. 
Turns out I got BPD. Okay. <laughs> so that like, long story short. Yeah, long story short. And I, you know, I got I started to get medicated for that. I started to learn what that was. I started to be able to de-escalate. Um, it's taken me this whole year, man, has really just been internal healing with my sponsor, doing doing my work, doing I was my gonna, steps, I, doing okay, the program. Okay, okay. I'm sorry to interrupt. I, no. wa- I wanted to ask you if you had a sponsor. I do. I do. Can we and, talk? Because I don't yeah. have one. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm on the verge of potentially looking into that. Um, I'm, I, like I said, I'm currently doing EMDR and that's really working for me now. Um, I haven't had any relapses, knock on wood. Right. Um, but it's also easy when, you know, I was, I got sober because I got pregnant. And so for me, I was like, oh gosh, like this is a wake up call for me. Right. And then I immediately went into therapy with my partner and my husband and it was like, it was a wake up call for me. Right. But, um, you know, many years of, of sort of being that chaotic, tragic, beautiful princess. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I just wanted to be Angelina Jolie so So bad. bad. So in Gia and and girl interrupting. I'm just like, Oh, the pain. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Turns out people don't like to be around that. Yes. (laughs) Turns out that's kind of unlovable. (laughs) Yeah. And just turn, yeah, you get really sick of yourself. There's just nothing. And once I got that diagnosis, man, what was that like? Getting the, and can you explain what BPT is? Yes. So BPD, borderline personality disorder, I would say it's just basically a long-term ingrained trauma response. The biggest symptom is that you're so afraid of abandonment and rejection, which I think this is really interesting, real or perceived. Doesn't have have to be they actually abandon you. Oh, you mean like being a just child actor? Just have to actor? be a whisper. Oh, yeah. wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. can we talk about Right? It? And and so that's like this constant thing. And so I'm constantly just trying to blow up my space whenever I feel any little piece of anything. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that wasn't normal to continue to have relationships with people in your life. I didn't know that you didn't like, you know what I mean? Burn bridges with everybody. I didn't. I feel you. I, I, I say I didn't really have a friend or know how to be a friend until I turned 30. Yeah. Like, um, it, it was, it was, it's basically not having any idea, sense of self. You blow with the wind. Like, wherever you go, you mm-hmm. have these constant feelings of self-harm, you know. Yeah. Uh, even if I you can don't feel suicidal, this. you you that's a lot of the affect you give off. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. that's sort of like attention victim-y, like. Yep. It's horrible. Like I, I would don't do the, beat yourself yeah, up. Yeah, it was. It, I think you're fucking. But awesome. I'm so grateful. Like, <laughs> thank you. Like this, this diagnosis and just more awareness of myself and getting sober. It's the greatest accomplishment I've ever. I mean, this and it's a continuous one. But um, I have been like it secretly is the rooting greatest for you. Thing I've ever experienced, and I've earned yeah. it, dude. Fuck I've yeah, earned it. This there was one time in this year that I really wanted to, whatever. And I looked at my binder at work, man, and just like. That was my soul on paper. Mm-hmm. And I just couldn't start back at day one. You know? Yeah, no, you can't. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. If you if you get emotional today, yeah. don't even worry. No. We can cut out any bit. No, no, no. It's like. real. But just as far as a sponsor, yo, like, um, there's just somebody beside you every day mm-hmm. that uh is with you through the mundane. Yeah. In the ordinary. Which they, is fucking they hard. They have nothing to do with your success. They yeah. have nothing to do with anything. No, they're they literally just want to know how you are. Yeah. And 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 they want to meet with you and be like, hey. Um, what's your gratitude list like? How are you? Like, I love you. You're, yeah. you're a person and I value you for that. And that's what I love about that program and about her. It's just like, that's just my little like friend who d- who's, who's in this precious box who really yeah. doesn't have anything else to do with my life mm-hmm. and can be really unbiased and root for me. And I can take, I can, I can trust her when mm-hmm. I can't trust myself. And, um, and you can trust the program. Yeah. She has no stake in me other than, and then that was the big thing for me is like finding something that didn't have a stake in what I did, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and that's what I found with the This program. is, okay, let's unpack the fact that being, a, and, and also this is, oh, man, there's so much to unpack here. I'm like so happy to talk to you. <laughs> me too. Seriously, I am. I I'm really, it. really I happy. I feel you. So you're, you're teaching kids now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. So there's, that's one, that's one part of this. People yeah. need to understand that. Who Lindsay and all that Lindsay has gone through to get to this desk today, it's it's a very complex thing. And and you are a living, breathing, like success story. Whether you define it or not, you are. You're sitting here and you're celebrating that and you're taking it one day at a time. 
And you're able to say, like, I've worked, I'm working my steps. I, I, I literally have someone to call who I call a sponsor. You know, I'm six years sober and I don't have a sponsor and I really want one and I want to work my steps. Yeah. But things get in the way. So the fact that you're committed to that is is fucking commendable, first of all. I appreciate you. I, I, I couldn't have gone more off the rails. Like, it couldn't <laughs> have been more of a scary... I mean, I, I finally reached rock bottom. Like, yeah. that, that's what it was, you know? And, yeah. Rock so bottom grateful. sucks, rock doesn't it? Rock bottom is like... Oh, I thought I was here. You know what they don't tell you? If you don't take to the first rock bottom, there are rock bottoms. Mm -hmm, <laughs> like, there are. You know? Yeah, what, what, so what do you think about with rock bottoms, with the plurals, like as a person who's suffered from multiple rock bottoms? Um, yeah. Yeah, I just think... Um, yeah, so I, I, I think that you can practice rock bottom more than once. So, so you experience it. But sometimes that doesn't take, as in like, um, maybe it was like something that wasn't really, the, it's, 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 it's insane how fast you can explain away a rock bottom. Sure. Yeah. And, and the next day when you're feeling a little bit better, your nose is feeling better, you mm -hmm. don't feel like you're going to puke or like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or die from the inside, like, you're like, that wasn't so bad and I still have to get this done and da 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 Yeah, you, know? you can and so, function. Yeah, mm -hmm. and they say, well, that's not truly your rock bottom. I don't think so, man. Like, as people who dissociate and whatever, you can totally be in rock bottom and be in some dissociative state like six hours later. I didn't even know about dissociation. So how much does dissociation play into the coping mechanisms of BPD and all that stuff? That is the main uh, coping mechanism of yeah. BPD is to dissociate. That's that's also why the sense of self is so um, confused because uh, it, every feeling is like another splinter of yourself. Like you're just oh, constantly shit. like I call it like like blackouts. It's almost like blackout rage where you don't quite remember what happened. Something is like life and death always. Um, and so I didn't realize. I was doing drugs constantly in my 20s to, I, I think I started to you realize. You were self-medicating I though. started to realize when I was 18, something's wrong. Yeah. And then I did, I would say my entire 20s was a dissociative state. Yeah. I get that. I get that. Um, fuck. <laughs> and it's only a little different than bipolar. The mood swings can happen like zero to 60, like, like terrifying. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And they still happen, but I'm like in therapy for that and I'm on the med on meds, which are treating me great. Okay. Look at me getting all like flustered right now. Don't I'm get flustered. Yeah, no, you're fucking killing it. But it's, it's just a lot to come hard back to from, talk dude. About yeah, it. and now that I'm vulnerable and not with <laughs> the drugs, these, <laughs> <laughs> these little clouds fall on you and these little different things that you're like, why does this bug me so much the next day? Oh, wow, this is reminding me of back then and back uh, then and this and that and other. And wow, my you heart's open taps? to those things. Have you learned mm -mm. taps? That's an EMDR thing. I would I would look into it with your with your with your uh, Psychiatrist. therapist. Yeah, yes. yeah. The EMDR stuff. So recently, because of my memoir, I I was told by a few people to to listen to um, what happened to you. It's a book by Dr. Bruce Perry and Oprah, and um, who? It, <laughs> I needed that. Um, fucking changed my life. Like it opened up the window, the door. It, it took a sledgehammer to the wall mm. of understanding what dissociation was, understanding what trauma is, childhood trauma, and how we all connect to it as child actors. Yeah. And I I am curious though. You know, you did start young. Can we just go back to like what 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 do, do you think that there's any correlation to anything that you're experiencing now from some of your childhood experiences? I think I think I think acting just um capitalized like just helped me hide it better. I don't think acting is actually what hurt me. Okay. I I really think like Yes, that needed to be perfect and that showing up and that constant showmanship, but it was almost like this place that I could put all of that crap that I, I had experienced. I see. I think dissociating started really early for me, like five, five years old, and just not feeling safe from 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 that point, right? And then okay. that, the acting was almost like a home that wasn't broken I see. for me. So you did you have a kind of a hard upbringing? I, I you know, yeah. Like, okay. you know, people weren't totally equipped to do their jobs and okay. it kind of showed and yeah. I got to personalize that. Just like, you know, every good kid in every every kid everywhere, whatever they take off of their parents. And so yeah. um, acting just felt so safe, man. Like I felt like I could express all those emotions that I was just so tight-lipped about. Interesting. Um, 
so it was it was helpful for me. It's when I went home that like everything would 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 fall apart. Fuck, that's so yeah. interesting to me. Yeah. I didn't, yeah, it was almost like the acting was a great escape, but I think it also kept me from getting the diagnosis. I think it also okay. kept me from putting up boundaries in my life. I'm an actress. I can live yeah. like a crazy person. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. I feel you on that. You know, it's encouraged in some ways. And this is why there's so many different types of um, like roads that end in certain kinds of addiction or mental health crises or, and you know, there's yeah. a lot of different roads that people who do start young end up going down and they don't hit their bottom and they don't find a way to cope and to manage and to fix that or to live in reality. It's, it's, and, and, and God damn it. When I, when I read this book, it changed, it broke my heart while it also kind of helped it to, yeah please, would you do me a favor? Would you please listen to the, yeah. either the, 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 I'll buy it for you. No, I, I got to totally do. read it. Okay. Tell me, tell me what it is. Okay. Again. It's called, um, what happened to you? What happened to you? And, and it's, 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 it was transformative. It really truly was in a fucking Oprah, you oh know? Oh my gosh. I love that. I mean, and, and this doctor literally helps, um, find like serial killers wow. by interviewing <sighs> the like, like brothers of, of like their sister was taken and it's a, like a three-year-old kid and he has to like interview the three-year-old kid to find out where the details of what the suspect looked like. Like this guy's this, he's, wow. yeah, he's the real deal trauma person. Amazing. Wow. Um, I, yo, hello, <laughs> trauma sisters. Let's go girl. i I love you. This I love is you awesome. too. I mean, this is not what we usually do in terms of the format. We're just getting into it like hardcore and I'm loving it. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving that you're loving it because a lot of times people who I may know and share, you know, and share something with, they're scared, man. They're scared to come and sit next to me and be vulnerable. Yeah. So vulnerable, vulnerable becomes more of like a chronological discussion when what it's really set up to do is to create a safe space uh, to, to, to talk about your true journey. Yeah. And, and I, and I respect that some of my guests aren't ready to have those kinds of discussions Yeah, or they don't see this platform, this, this, this podcast as the way to do that. Yeah. But ideally that's, this is the kind of conversation that I yeah. truly want to have. Yeah. I mean that. No, and no, I, I, I appreciate it because, um, you need that it platform. It is so hard. Lens. Yeah. Like, but like, but like, so you were on TikTok for a while. Yes. And some shit went down. Some shit did go down. And it was fucking weird. And, and it was it was really weird. And it's something that Were you um, but were you were you sober then? No. Okay. So people, give her a fucking break. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing. I got sober. I don't think I I got sober in August. Okay. Last last day of August. Yeah. And I think that happened in June. Okay. Um yeah, that was Was that like near your that rock was bottom? Stunning. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Oh, that was very near. I call it shit show weekend one and two. First like the second two weeks in August. And okay. um I think all of that was like, you know, I'm really sorry that happened. I'm I, I am really sorry that happened. As somebody who understands what being traumatized is like, uh -huh. even when people don't mean it. Uh-huh. Yep. Um, I understand that that acknowledgement of that is like, I, I understand that that's how that made you feel and I'm sorry. Uh -huh. Like I am sorry. Sure. Um, you take accountability. Of course. For where, where, of yeah. course. Yeah. Because I take responsibility for being in the position I'm in. I take, you know, I'm a, like, yeah. I'm not a shitty person, man. Nobody thinks that they are, but it's like, I, I care. Mm -hmm. I care that that affected somebody. Mm -hmm. I sat with that for so long, man, that, that, you know. But I think the question is, what can you take away from that that's useful because let's talk about cancel culture for a minute and, and what it does to the average person or a person who does have stuff to work on. There's two, there's definitely in the, in the spectrum of people who are canceled, there are the people who absolutely need to be called out and, and brought to justice. There's people on the other side of the spectrum that fucked up, made a mistake mm -hmm. and are going to learn because of those comments that people are making that. And those are the people that deserve another chance. Yes, that's that's exactly it. And this this is what I, I like absolutely learned from that. Mm -hmm. um, so I realized and I, I like I'm in this little bubble when I'm trying to create something. And like I very rarely 
step outside of that. You know what I mean? Like I very rarely have an awareness of how that affects. So, so what I'm saying is like my, like I am, wow. Yeah. How things come off. It's it, okay. I can explain it like this. I'm one of those people who speaks before they think yeah. I'm one of those people who all, uh, you know, yeah. and so I, I give zero extra consideration to what I'm creating. And, and, and I didn't even realize that. This is by the way of, of, of how people want you to portray yourself on social media. Just, you know, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I just, you have to think about that's everything. That's what I mean. That's, yeah. that's, that's, and that was, me wanting a result as yeah. opposed to me being like chill or authentic or seeing it for what it was. I wanted a like viral result for my idea of it. Mm -hmm. And I was frustrated and not willing to put it down for a minute and give it mm -hmm. more time. Mm -hmm. It was rushed and unaware and oh, yeah. out of touch. I can't even imagine that 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 must have been a contributing factor to you getting sober for sure. Absolutely. And 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 for that I I'm thankful. And but I am for that I think you deserve a second chance in life. Yeah, and thanks. there you go. So let's thanks. move forward, people. Thanks. Let's move forward. Let's let's So do it. so now have you been working too? I no. Like, no? So you took time have you taken time off? You've been um, like I don't know if I've taken time off, but time has taken off of me. <laughs> that makes sense. I mean, no, I've I'm definitely resonating to new representation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that has been, you know, just finding my footing there with who I really feel confident going forward with. Like once you're in your right mind, you're like, yeah. wow. Yeah, like I'm who's actually gonna think about who's in my life. Wow. And that's what sobriety has known for me too. Girl. It's made me be like, just wait a second and look. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. which is something I really didn't have previously. Dude, perspective is is crazy. How um, when you're not sober, you can't make the right decision. No, you can't make any decisions that are like out. Like you can't think about the ripple. Yeah, like all you think about is like oh, I'm the wave. Yeah. You know? Oh my god, that's really that's true. <gasps> yeah, that's true. You're the wave. Yeah, not like. In, bleh, not that's that. really beautiful. Yeah. I love that. I really do. <laughs> I love you. Um, so I'm really curious still about your sponsor. So how did you meet your sponsor? At a, at so a... I met her at a meeting. Okay. And um, I love it. I go to those midnight meetings. Oh, yeah. Like, midnight hey, meetings. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Midnight meetings in like LA are the best. I feel like, so I started going to a midnight meeting because it kept me accountable during the nights yeah. when I when it would be easier to go drink. But mm -hmm. if you knew you were going somewhere or you, you know, <laughs> your meeting, yeah. it was easier just not to drink. And so that kind of became, became my home group. Yeah. And she was in there. She just was like such a rock star. I loved it. She led one of the nights in the meetings that I was in. You're and, like her. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I see you. <laughs> and it's insane how much, like how many of her stories correlate with exactly what I'm doing. I assume, which I think I'm about to spot, like go into sponsoring. Really? Um, I assume you get back the people that you were. You know ah. what I mean? She, she's like, you don't, you don't like, sometimes I like go a couple of days without talking to her. She's like, um, I used to do this all the time to my sponsor, but blah, 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 blah. I don't know. You just see that your same <laughs> character defects like reflected right. back on you and whoever right. you're trying to help. Well, I remember, um, and this was when I was in Al-Anon cause I was, I was doing Al-Anon quite a bit when I really needed AA, but, um, they were talking about even with Al-Anon, you getting a sponsor and, and they said that, you know, look for someone that has something that you want not necessarily looks exactly like the person you want to be mm -hmm. and like all that superficial stuff. Yeah. Look for a person that's attained what it is that you want for yourself. Mm -hmm. My first sponsor was 65 years old, mm -hmm. a wonderful woman. Mm -hmm. And I picked her because, my gosh, if I could have that kind of zest for life at 65, mm -hmm. like she was full, right? And sober and Amazing, you know, and I ended up moving away from there. And yeah. so, you know, she's not my primary sponsor Logistically, anymore. But yeah. yeah. Okay. You know. Yeah, man. And so then with her, it's like, it's almost not even like checking in with her. It's like checking in with yourself, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and she's just right there to to do that. And it's it's good that you always get a same sex sponsor. There's no like, you know. Straight, not not that not that there even is that, but just like that weird biochemical thing that happens with a man and a woman. Whatever. I I gotta say to be to be honest, like um, uh, I had a really unfortunate situation when I was in Al-Anon. Um, so so basically, like I like I said, I should have been in AA, 
but I was in Al-Anon. That's Al still great that you're showing up there, though. That's still meetings and accountability. Thank you. Yeah, well, it was also before I got sober, so it was really kind of like, still, you're I still understand. That's the What's most so precious weird time. is that I understand 12 steps. Mm -hmm. I know how to speak the language of yeah. recovery. So weirdly enough, it's like I did, I did the work. I don't know. I honestly, yeah, no, yeah, you're in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but so basically, I had a negative situation happen to me. So I, there was a gentleman who had shared about his mom, and and um, he, but he ran a bar, and um, it was a bar in town called Happy Endings, and um, you know, I, I went there after you know an acting class one time. He wasn't affiliated with that, and he was throwing shots to everybody, and then at you know, I was hammered. And at the uh, last call, he like brought me somewhere and it was not positive. You know what I'm saying? And so unfortunately, I feel like there are predators in recovery. And I, I, I think that's why that, that rule exists. Absolutely. Is so that the fraternization, it can happen very easily. And when you think about the fact that everyone in that room is, is it should be focused on something, I feel like that can be a distraction. Oh my, I, I can't even be as open in in coed meetings as as just with women. I, I don't know what, like, and that's just a whole slew of factors. But it, yeah, the first time I went to AA, I came home with a guy I was about to shoot meth up with. Oh my god! And then, <laughs> then my roommate knocked, and I was like, right, I'm this person, not that get out. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah, there's terrible, and I think the practice of like. I'm not even going to speak truth. Well, how you turn in your chip and like somebody, yeah. some bars will give you a free drink. Oh, fuck. What? Yeah. What fucking bar does that? And these are just some bars that do that. Like, oh, that's just, disgusting. And it's absolutely heinous. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's some um, bullshit. But that's that's really scary. That's something that could really push people away from the program. And it's it's like the Predators in AA are just the yeah. worst type of people. Like, yeah. why? You're coming to basically a triage hospital well, <laughs> and yeah. being like... You know. So were you saying that you were involved with a recovery program? Or no, that's your program. That's my my um uh the program that you're working, you're yeah. saying, or you were not separately in part of a like because Jody Sweeten is like um this wonderful gal. You should get to know her. Yeah, I know I've seen her, she's lovely. Dude, if you don't know her, you guys would you just love her. She's just the best. She seems like a real And like, she runs recovery programs now. Oh my gosh, that's yeah. what I want to start to do. She, she's Dope. No, yeah. I need you guys to like, no. I'm down. Because you know why? I think mentorship is where we were failed by Hollywood. I don't think anybody, especially, I mean, from some of the things I've heard about Nickelodeon, like, it doesn't seem like mentorship was a big thing. <laughs> like, so. Or like, here, go to the Kids' Choice Awards. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to put this slime on your face. Yep. <laughs> You're going to like it. Yep. <laughs> But um, I never really ever understood the concept of the slime because it felt extremely demoralizing. <laughs> like, yeah, fun, cool, sticky, gooey, but like but demoralizing. Like, like, aren't you old enough to feel like that was not a positive experience? Right, yeah, you are. I don't actually, I mean, I think I got slimed like a couple times and I was so happy to be included. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I had that whole like you you want to you want to put poop on my face <laughs> <laughs> exactly fuck the crazy and they would try to do that stuff to me on Disney they would try on even Stevens they would try to be like hey so like we want to start this like um shot like uh, focused on your butt and then we're gonna like zoom out and I was like no you're not oh I was like absolutely not and I was old enough to like like know that that was well you know what it was I was insecure enough to where I was like, I, I was like, no, 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 don't go anywhere near there. You know what I mean? Wow. Like so, but but I still advocated for myself yeah, out huge. of my type A A-ness, you know, like so yeah, that's I don't know. Fantastic. I guess. But have it you, wasn't in advocacy's you, name. It was just because I was scared. Found on a lot of your sets, like that's like you're able to do that, like you just set a standard for for So the getting into the topic of advocacy for children actors, it's um definitely part of the one of the one of the pillars of me doing this podcast and talking to you know former child actors and yeah. whatever and learning about our journeys and and how we've been so disconnected by the experience but we've all had a very similar experience yeah. and um some of the things that come from that though i find it really interesting when you're like look this was my safe space you know um i look at somebody like shia labeouf and he's like okay i don't know him i really haven't known him for many many years 
but people assume I do one. But two, I could tell that being on set was a safer space for him than mm. maybe at home, at right? Home. So right. It, it, that's the story that we hear several times. Yeah. Um, that, you know, sometimes set is the after school program yeah. that saves the kid or feeds the kid or yeah. makes sure that they're taken care of. And, and just gives them like, atten- like even just that attention, that like yeah. pure attention for being, I don't know, like a kid, you get that on set. A lot of like mamas and papas, the hair. You get like that, adopted. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. So, okay. So that's in the case of a child who doesn't have a good home. Right. right? Um, and then there are some kids who have the parents that are like really overprotective, but they're also very controlling and they're, you know, taking their money exactly, and, yep. and that's a whole nother level of like fear. And so what, what, what continues to come to me, is just this concept of advocacy and the concept of getting a diagnosis or, or being aware of what your diagnosis would have been, mm-hmm. not glamorizing the lifestyle of chaos and Hollywood and drugs and rock and roll. And I think that now more than ever, mental health has been destigmatized or the, the, the struggle of mental health has been destigmatized. Mm-hmm. So we're able to come to these tables and have these discussions. Absolutely. So that like a little Lindsay doesn't have to go through what Lindsay, you know? Yeah. I don't know if you've done any like of that work yet. Oh, but oh. Have you been doing some, have you? Oh yeah, she's just upset. Okay, so when I really like start to dissociate, when I really start to dissociate, there starts to become very starkly the little girl and the, and the, and the, and the aggressor, right? Okay. So, but I've like started to listen to her and she's like very sad in those times. Instead of taking this role, you start to take that role. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because like you're beating yourself up either way. So sometimes like just listening to that little girl, she is so you know, like raw up in there, you know, like yeah. she's just like, I feel like she's constantly exposed now that I've gotten this diagnosis and a little bit of like, you know. Well, and they say too, when you start recovery, sometimes it's like, like you're the age of when you started using or yeah. when you started being affected. Yeah. So it's like you have to like. So I kind of feel like I'm five years old inside a lot of time. Like I, feel I that. have a lot of like. Like getting like really excited during the day. I make a lot of noises. I do a lot of voices. Like talking to myself constantly. Like yeah. I I, I don't know. Like part of that is just I feel like a little kid always. Mm-hmm. Like I feel like I will always feel like that. But, but it's also it. if you need, great. If you need to talk and rediscover yourself, yeah. and, and and you need to voice that child. Let me tell you something. I'm doing that inner child work too right now, and it is really hard to locate that little girl's voice for me. Yeah, she's quiet. I can't even like locate her, but I'm working and yeah. that inner child work. I think all of us, all of us, like, you know, who weren't yeah. even the actors and stuff. Like, I think all of us really do need to check in with our inner child and yeah. get to know that person. That's the thing also with my sponsor. Mm-hmm. It's like a safe space to do that. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. You just like, yeah, you just get to kind of talk it out in this really, um, I don't know. It's Safe just for space. You. It's just for you. Yeah. It's not for like social media. It's not for anything. It's just for you. Like you get to check in right there with you and um, safe. So, okay. So and you get to talk to that like inner child because that's where you start to work on that stuff too. It's like, wh- when did that start? Why does that hurt? Well, I remember when I did this when I was four, like, and that's what's kept going on. So then you look at that and you're like, oh man, that four-year-old's the one who's hurt every time I react like that. And that's what becomes easier to move past it. I've seen people put pictures of themselves on um, TikTok and they'll put pictures on their mirrors and they'll say, every time I wanna talk badly to myself, like in the mirror, I look at that picture and I realize that I'm talking to her. Yeah. And it's like, I'm I'm thinking about doing that. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, 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 I have one on my phone that I just oh, like good. constantly kind of like look at and I have like this picture of me and my mom on my phone. And just reminds me of like simpler times, you know, like, like, I look at these little kids that I coach now and it's like, I see all this hope. And I, I'm like, that was us. Like we cared that much. There was that much like wonder and everything for us. And yeah. like, it makes me sad in a way, but it also makes me like, um, nostalgic for that little kid and myself and to all, honestly like bring that forth with them. Like because I am such a little kid with them. It's dumb. That's so good Yay. for them. That is, that's so amazing. Yeah. We have to talk into how that all happened for you. Yeah. Um, so, so now Alyssa K, you're doing these. Alyssa K Studios. Okay. That is who I work with now. She is my absolute best friend. Oh, good. Um, she has been a huge 
sober companion for me. Amazing. And unbelievable. Like Amazing. she's probably my first friend ever, I say. And Aww. so she has opened this class because she's fantastic. Mm -hmm. And she's built this really lovely thing. And now I get to be a part of it. Amazing. You know? And yeah. they're lucky to have you, man. Like... It's amazing that they can have you as their their sort of spirit guide, their mentor. I know, and I find that I'm talking to them about so much more than just um, acting. Mm -hmm. Like all of it is just like, and you'll find it, this road in your life and yada, yada, yada. And yeah. Yeah. So I get to be a kid with these kids. I never actually thought that I could be as uh, fulfilled be uh, behind the camera as I was in front. Turns out that ego is willing to lay down when I see these uh, <laughs> other kids. Like my whole focus, I actually truly feel like that's the higher power space that I always feel. It's because like, it's not coming from me, man. It's coming totally through me. Wow. And um, they, God, they just inspire me. And then like- it, So are you a good teacher? <laughs> I'm a committed teacher. I'm a passionate teacher. I don't I know if it's good, good but I just- <laughs> I think you're a good teacher. I want to give them everything. I'm like, you deserve everything. Yeah. All of your little confidence and potential, like, gosh. Yeah. 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 You want to advocate. Yeah. You want to advocate for them. Yeah, it's everything that I didn't have, like a good little, like, you know, like somebody who cared. Like my teacher, when I went, when I mentor, when I went to him, he was 50 years old. Like I loved him, but he wasn't like a, you know. He was out of, he was. Yeah, he was very his, different. His technique was beautiful, but it was more like an authority, whatever, uh -huh. you know, and we just get there to vibe fear. with these kids. It was yeah. fear based a little when bit. we were yeah. growing up. Mm -hmm. So doing it right, doing it wrong. It's not like Showing that. up, being yeah. a professional. Yeah. Don't make waves. Yeah. Do, do what you're asked to do yeah. quickly. Yeah. Don't ask questions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's not the way you're going to teach your kids. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. Um, yeah. I mean, I call them out when they need to, like, shape up. Like, Good. it's all about boundary discipline. I mean, just showing them, like, I'm paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. That's it. Whether you need a little bit of, you know, this kind of talk or this kind of talk, it's being real with them and just showing them that, you know? Like, yeah. you, you're not going to get a pass on everything you do. It's just, it's the coolest experience for me as somebody who, like, is at the age where I, you know, I could have kids. It's just, it's, yeah, I don't know. It's I did really cool. this, like, weird acting class thing, um, which I would not suggest you get involved with. Um, they, they, they pretty much, like, exploit people um where they go to like malls and like they'll be like yeah and i think we've all been like approached by them yes. or we've done like a weekend or two and i was kind of thick into this one particular one that was like a spinoff and like it was really kind of an ugly color and it was before i had kids up until i was pregnant and i struggled with you know how I was going to make a living. And yeah. like, you know, even up till I was pregnant, I was in a really kind of like, and like I said, like when I got pregnant is when I stopped drinking and everything. So I was going to therapy and I was still struggling with this idea of identity and um, how to provide for my family. And my husband and I really healed so much from our therapy and the birth of my first child. Mm. But there's something so healing in... In, in these children that I can really relate to you on. They look at you with the <laughs> most pure love. And I can't imagine if it was yours. I was like, I could never have a kid. Like, I think I would. But these are your kids. They are. That's and okay. And just like, I don't know, just like talking to myself. Yeah. Talking to myself, you know, and showing them this like compassion, but also this possibility Mm. And not that I do all of that, but I'm just saying like, <laughs> geez, even to be a part of that and it is so innocent, it is so pure and it's definitely healing my innocence too. Mm -hmm. Like my gosh, I want to do nothing with them but tickle them and run around and mm -hmm, like be mm -hmm. silly. Even the teens, I'm like, be silly. Yeah, because they're Come so obsessed on. with their phones. Yeah. Yeah. Run around, jump, do it. Like yeah. scream into a pillow. That's my favorite favorite <laughs> technique to make them do. Uh, do your entire paragraph uh, jumping jacks in a circle. Yeah. Like yeah. sing it. Do it in a British accent. Be fun. Be, yeah. Have fun because when they have fun, we have fun. Yeah. And what I feel really good about is like I don't even feel like I'm just – I'm not making actors. Like these, these – whatever – but this is like a life class that I feel like they come to. And I think like that's the best of our business when it when it can be that, right? Like yeah. we're not just teaching technique and crap. Right. We're teaching intimacy, connection, um, vulnerability, uh, emotional awareness. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, also giving you a voice, courage, all of it. People have to be careful though with who they're, they're bringing their kids into these classes because there are people who are not as uh, – 
capable as you and 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 qualified as you. And it's 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 horrible. Like what happens to like um yeah, yeah you just got to be really careful. I got so lucky with my mentor, but some of these people um really just want to talk you down and into a corner. Yeah. Sometimes that's just kind Not of the feedback I've got. And, and, it, and it kills it kills their true love of the art yeah. form and the craft and stuff when it's they act like there's an upper hand to be had. Mm -hmm. Like they're an authority dishing out this like like stuff that they made right in the back kitchen, homemade. Right. Like here's here's everything about acting. It's like, no man, acting is done from from this plane, always with each other, you know? Mm -hmm. There's no like levels and this and that and other. I just I really don't agree with how a lot of um schools are me too at all me too um so you really really got to watch out for that right yeah. like and then so then you're doing this it's here yes. are you doing anything like online would you ever yeah yeah, yeah. it's all it's zoom based actually oh, yeah so people can actually find the studio yep. the Alyssa K studios Alyssa K and they studios. can request yep. your class absolutely Oh, that's so cool. Are you yeah. doing like solos too then? Yeah, I do oh, privates that's... and it, you know, obviously if you're in the area, we we can meet up and that kind of a thing, but uh, awesome. yeah, it is catered to kids like all over the country, so classes mm -hmm. via Zoom. Um, and yeah, it's like the most rewarding thing I've ever done. That's <laughs> so cool, man. <gasps> yeah. I'm really really happy for you. Thanks. Because you just never know like when your higher power is speaking to you, what can happen? Because I never would have thought that I would have, uh, I'm sorry, a neon sign with this podcast that I'm now like, you know, I'm a, I have a husband who loves me um, and is committed to being, you know, the father to my kids and like I respect him and, you know, I'm, I am six years sober, maybe even more like at this point. It's like I've lost count, but it's there and it's truthful and it's authentic <laughs> and it's happening every day and like it's not easy. There really truly are days that are harder. And that's why I think that's why I wish that I, I had a program. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's not a perfect thing, but I have not relapsed. Yeah. And so. Hey. <laughs> that sounds like quite a life, yo. I don't know, man. It's, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's living a quality life, even if it's not, you know, some glamorous life it is glamorous to me you know like you you touching these kids lives that is glamorous. glamorous to me like it's never it's my sponsor told me that too she goes you think that the work of your life is going to be this grand thing that everybody sees and like that's what you want it to be she's like the like work the of highlight reel yeah she's like the work of my life was caring for my husband before he passed away of cancer yeah she's like that that's what i realized it was right in the walls of my own home and like that was my life's work um, and, and, and I think we like glamorize these moments of grandeur. Yes, they're amazing, but we don't, we don't put in the work in the, in the connective tissue to, to reach those moments. We just want our entire lives to be like, you know what I mean? All of those like big moments. And it's like, you got to do connective tissue work in between and build that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's, that's, that's not a lifestyle, dude. That, that, that's like <laughs> a, a medical condition waiting to happen. Like, what are you talking about? Sex, drugs, and you don't even care the next night. Cause it's not, it's, it's not just real. not what it was. It's, it's not, not real, real and it's not a sustainable lifestyle. It's no. not anything. We were sold that somehow. I don't somehow. know how. And somehow it was like, you know, you're something less if you don't, if you, if you, if you can't keep up with it. And, and the life you were given as opposed to the life I'm making with my hands is somehow more desirable than like me taking these decisions into my own hands, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somehow being out of control. Yeah. Continues to be sexy. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. and just that really constant weird. question of like, do you act anymore? And da da da. It's like, yes. And that timing for, I think I will always be that at heart. If that ever translates into being on screen again or not, like, obviously that's something that but I hope so for and I'm talented, there. You're so talented, Lindsay. I know, but so are a lot of people. I know. That's true. And, you know, like, I get it. Do you, if, do you, if I can find that much joy in something behind the camera, I know that like it's it's not just all there in front of it I for get me. It. You know? I get it. It's it's not the most important thing. Yeah. You have to exist yeah. outside of your IMDb page. Yes. And I just <laughs> never did that. I, I never did that. You worked so much. I worked so hard and I just was I like, get no, it. so not happy. I get it. Oh my God, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Dude, you. like, and the weird thing is, is like when I met you, um, uh, like I guess you were, st you know, you weren't, no. In that sobriety mode. But I didn't know. Oh. And I loved you from then. I love you then. And I could only love you more now. But that level of connectiveness, I, I've always had with you. I just yeah. want you to know that. Like, I've, I'm, I'm still connected to you now. I'm still your friend. 
even though like I don't live close to you, yeah. we didn't get to hang out in our 20s. I think that might have been a good thing. I think so too, <laughs> girl. I really do. No, I look up to you so much. You are a badass. Somebody oh, that no. is definitely still like, still like a role model for me. Like, Shit. yeah, yeah. No, like you. <laughs> And and even today, like now in your personal life, it's just it's it, you're such good vibes and energy oh, and like you. I feel this thing that you're building and like all this creativity, f- and you're finding different ways to flow it out, man. Like but I look at you're a part of that. It, you really truly are. No, I mean to say that like your um, stories and like your like journey that will continue to be a part of mine. Yeah. And like I'm always gonna welcome you to come to the table because I have bigger plans to like try to try to grow awareness into things. Yeah. Nothing that's going to like get anyone in trouble. Yeah. But it's 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 not like I'm trying to be a whistleblower. Yeah. You know, like a lot of this stuff has happened I guess with like Dan Schneider and I I know. I know. It's it's one of those things where it's like people are really scared. Not Schneider's don't. Bakery. <laughs> what is that? Schneider's Bakery was the thing he'd put it all at the end of his production company. Oh, really? But Schneider's Bakery. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Did you, wait, was Dan a part of your no. stuff? Okay. No, 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 no. I didn't think he was. No. He was like after. Yeah. Okay, got it. So yeah. who was your producer then? Um, Scott Fellows. Oh, okay. Lovely, okay. amazing, okay. perfect person. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he really? Yes. Not canceled? No. Okay, got no. it. No. Very different. No, he's still, no. He's, okay, so yeah. your experience with Nickelodeon was good. Fantastic. Really? One of the best in my life. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Okay. Well, d- d- not for you. Oh, no, Disney was fine. Yeah. Disney was very corporate, and our producers, and also my mom was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> in a good way she advocated yes, for you yes, like, yeah. yes no I mean she just scared the shit out of everybody she was so controlling lucky yeah no offense my mom took the other tact of just being <laughs> asleep like, no, in I'm my cool. dressing room all the time <laughs> no. love like, love her she made the scrapbook at the end okay but um nice. love love that but so she funny. was kind of people's different yeah she was, she was like Bleh. she's like they got you that's so funny. <laughs> so what about um, like Devin and stuff? Are you guys still in touch and everything? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know. Has he been like with you in this sobriety journey? He has. He has. Really? Uh, I definitely hit him up a couple times when I wasn't sober. Um, and dude, he <laughs> You were trying loving. to hook up with him? Yeah. Well. <laughs> whatever. Um, Dev? <laughs> That's for TikTok, right there. That's I, for TikTok. I definitely wanted his attention. First of all, I've always stand you and Devin together. <laughs> Devin is Devin is uh, perpetually single, as are you. I feel like Devin's gonna get a restraining order oh, on me that, if, if I mention this so one more time. In it. oh please, he should be so lucky. Right? Come on, come on. Um, no, I just so anyway. So he he got to see that, and he was so lovely. He's like. I just, he's like, I'm so, I, I go, I'm so, so sorry. He's like, I just don't want you to do that to yourself anymore. And I'm like, no. Um, That's like family, dude. I know. He like looked at me, babe, when we reconnected, because I left for Arizona, we were, we were estranged even before that. But like, we, we got back together. Dude, he said one thing to me and I was like. What do you like, mean you got back together? No, 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 no. As in like, just. I want the tea, no, Lindsay. No, we didn't get back together. We just <laughs> met up cool. again. Like I hadn't seen yeah, him in like yeah. 10 years. Oh, wow. You know what I mean? Okay. And I see him again and he just says this. One thing to me, and I mean, I'm just like oh, drenched yeah. in tears. Like it was like nothing changed. It's like this, this sort of like connection. You, yeah, you look and you're you're like home. Was like Devin your first love though? Yeah. Oh wow, that's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. I don't know. I he just, was like I was obsessed with him. Main character I energy. No, made that main character energy. Yeah. And like you know, when you're on set, you you always just pine over that. I don't know. I've I've had a chronic thing with co-stars. Yeah. Um. That may not be the best thing. I agree. I agree. <laughs> You're both in this fantasy world I'm of telling like, you. I look like this every day. I'm telling you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. so amazing. So, yeah, but I mean, just being back in touch with him, what a good soul, man. Like, but like, I've met him and like, to see you guys together in a in like a healthy place, Yeah. how cool would that energy be? So cool. Yeah. I would like, love that. Yeah. yeah. I want to see you guys do a rewatch podcast. Yeah, let's do it. Rewatch podcast. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. She's in to do a rewatch podcast with uh, with our friend Devin. We're yeah. And do you think we could get our third person too? Maybe Daniel Curtis Lee. Yeah. Psh, yeah. Done. Oh, he's always in, man. He's a jet set <laughs> man, but like he's always in. Yeah. Okay, I would cool. adore that. That would be cool. Yeah. And so, and some of it would be really healing, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Good. You know what is weird? I haven't been able to watch it. Oh. No, 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 not in a bad way. Yeah, not yeah, in a bad yeah, yeah. Way. Okay, okay. Not in a bad way at all. Well, it's on Netflix. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, 
Man, there's so many memories. Like I would yeah. love to watch it with with them. Dude, we gotta you know? we got you gotta do this. Yes, it's gonna happen. I'm so in. We're manifesting okay, this for you. Good. So that's what's coming up. Good. And then other than that, we've got Alyssa K. Yeah. And, excuse me. Now I'm drinking the diet <laughs> coke. Okay, great. I hope that you guys have enjoyed our our journey here. It's nothing but love for Lindsay Shaw. Like she she's been through a lot and. Um, you're still here and you're and you're advocating for people and your heart is in the right place. And so I support your journey and I just always will. Thank you so much for having me and on. If you're ever and for fucking always confused. Up, yeah, always. Well, I'm free, always hitting no, no, you up because like, you're no, no, a star. I, I don't, but I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I just really appreciate being included with you and I'm glad that we feel the same way because like I, I feel that in spades for you. Good. Yeah. Well, Let's let's keep it that way. Cool. <laughs> we just created our own little handshake too. There you go. The and that's very handshake. EMDR friendly, right? That, that, that's like nice. That's on tabs. The... That's our new handshake. Oh, <laughs> I love that. <laughs> we morph you. into one. Like, yeah, like so so the vulnerable <laughs> Lindsay Carlson Romano. <laughs> I love that. Oh You're coming gosh. home with me. You didn't realize you, that. I love it. You have put <laughs> such a smile on my face. Oh, good. 